going on guys? Gauss 311 here, and this is the World of Warcraft board game. This game is 10 years old right now, it came out in 2005. So, what I thought of doing was bringing it back out. I've been playing this game a bit on Tabletop Simulator uh, with some friends, but I haven't played it, um, the actual board game itself. Um, I think I only played it once. We bought it like 10 years ago. I probably, I'm sure I would have bought it right when it came out. Because 10 years ago I was a huge fan of World of Warcraft. Um, I still enjoy World of Warcraft. I'm just kind of bored with it by now. But, um, the, um, I remember playing this with my wife one time. And we've only played it once. Because after that time she's like, uh-uh. Because -uh. this is before we played games that were this had this many rules and this, you know, complications, um, but now we've kind of gone up into playing games that with a lot of rules that take a long time, so I was going to bust it out and try it again with her, but before that, I was going to do some, play a little bit myself uh, as both factions, so the way the game works is you basically have uh, 30 turns, Every faction's turn is one on this track. So after the horde goes, we move to two, and then the alliance goes and move to three, and the horde goes and move to four. So, and once we get down to the end, there's going to be a large PvP fight between the two factions, and the winners will win the game. There's also an overlord in the game. There's three of them that come with the base game. This is just the base game. There's expansions I don't have. Um, so Kalthazad is one of the overlords, so I chose him for this game. Um, if you're playing a four-character game, you use this side of the sheet, and then there's a six-character game. This this uh, game goes from basically two to six players. And uh, so we're going to use the four side, the four-character side for Kalthazad. Um, he has a stat series, combat rules that happen when a fight happens, and then he has rules. So at the start of the game... Place Kalthazad Overlord Counter in Stratholme and add the five Kalthazad event cards to the event deck. So Kalthazad is up there in Stratholme waiting. And then there's an event deck that happens here. And there are, when this turn counter ever gets to a turn with a card, then we draw an event card. So five of, there's five cards in the event deck that normally are not in there, but they are there because we're doing the Kalthazad Overlord, which those could come up when the turn when we draw cards. Um, and that's his abilities. And then the other thing you can do if if you before you get to turn to the end of the game and have to do a PvP fight between the two factions, if you kill if any of the factions kill the Overlord before that happens then they automatically win the game. So, but you obviously, obviously, obviously have to beef your characters up, level them up before you can take him on. So the game is kind of a race to get XP, become stronger, get better items, and then either kill the Overlord or prepare yourself to kill the other faction. And the way you do that is with quests. And when you start a game, you draw a number of quest cards. These are basically the quest cards, what they look like. In the beginning of the game, uh, in a four, two player game, or four character game, depending on how many characters is how many quest cards you draw. So in this game, we draw three grays and one green. Grays are starting quests. Once you start, draw the starting quests, the rest of them go back in the box. You never draw from them again. Uh, the green are the lower level, and then we have um, the orange ones that are... A little higher level in the red which is the highest level quests so the difficulty basically once you complete a quest you get the rewards and then you replace it with a new quest and you get to choose which deck to choose from so a quest card for example for the horde we have a uh, starter quest here called um, horrors at the gates so this quest tells you to spawn different creatures so we spawn one blue knoll in stillwater pond and one green, um, I can't remember what they call them, zombie, it looks like a zombie, but I don't think it's exactly a zombie, can't remember, in the bulwark. And you get a reward here, we would get 6 gold, 5 XP, and 2 um, item cards of that symbol, which is the triangle, which is the lower level items. There's also some flavor text here, 
about the quest. Oh, it's a ghoul, I'm sorry, not a zombie ghoul. And then the level of the quest, which uh, could come into play when you... If you're a higher level than the quest, you would get an XP penalty based on the difference between your level and the quest level. So say we were level 2 when we completed this quest, instead of 5 XP for a character, he would only get 4. Because he's higher level than the quest, so you get a little bit of a penalty there between the difference. But basically, the blue creatures in the game are independent creatures, which means they don't give any rewards, they're just there to get in your way. If your characters ever go on a region with an independent creature, like this is a quest here for the Alliance. You determine quest by you put one of these down so you remember that this is the Alliance quest. And the quest is to kill these two green murlocs. But if for whatever reason you come in here, your next action has to be to fight the blue creature. They just get in the way. But they don't have anything to do with the quest. So they just get in the way. They basically make you use an action to fight them. And you get no rewards for it. So you try to get to stay away from the blue independent creatures if you can. Unless you have to go into an area with them. Um, but for this quest, for example, for the horde, you would have to get to the bulwark. Which is in this orange area. Basically right here is the bulwark. And you would have to fight this green ghoul. And if you fight and defeat him, then you get the rewards on the quest. And then you draw a new one. So in the four character game... You only get three starters and one green to go with. So that's what we have here. So I've kind of got my table set up as I can um, to keep things somewhat um, to keep things somewhat uh, uh, sorted here. So the characters we're going to use is Artem Artemis Moondream is a elf um, druid for the alliance and we're going to use uh, Burmon Fang who is a dwarven hunter that's the alliance group the alliance characters and then for the horde we're going to use um, Grumbaz Crow's Blood who is a fighter or a warrior and we're going to use uh, Sophia Icecall who is a w mage and that's the horde so they're going to be working together, or they could split up if they want. You can fight as a group, which is be probably better early in the game um, to get some levels. But uh, their, their job is to get quests, get XP and items, and then either fight the other group at the end or kill the Overlord. And that's basically the main gist of the game. Um, there's a lot of rules, but we'll go about through those as the game plays. and stuff. spending a whole video just explaining rules. I think it's better just to watch it and learn as we go. So for the first turn of the game, the Horde always goes first. So they get to do two actions on... Each character can do two actions on a turn. The character actions that you can do are Rest, which means you can immediately regain any combination... Sorry, this is not wanting to focus. Any combination of energy and health equal to twice your level or three times if you're in a town. A town is any area with a little town icon like Airy Peak there has a town for the Alliance being that it's uh, um, blue. The Horde has like Kaer Dar Darrow here has a Horde icon for well, that's actually a flight path it's not a town but there's town icons for both both uh, areas. So you could rest you could take a challenge action which means you can enter combat against a group of quest creatures or the boss um, in your current region and you have to take a challenge action against any blue creatures which is what I was saying before um, you can take a town action if you're in a town to do any or all of the following you can regain any combination of energy and health equal to your level you could purchase one or more eligible power cards from the class deck which are your abilities and you could purchase or sell items from the merchant deck so the merchant deck is a deck that gets built in the beginning here and here's the merchant deck um, there's five cards in there's a specific amount that you put in here uh, based on quality um, the triangles are the lowest quality then the blues are next and then the purples are the best and it's usually based on higher level stuff purples be higher level than the other character other ones so you see this purple card is in here is a level five card 
but it's also cost 20 um, gold to purchase it. So it's pretty tough to buy early on. But then we got this crocolis steak here, which only costs two gold, but it's level one. It's a food item. And it um, basically allows you to gain better, more energy. Okay, so and the last action we can do... Oh, actually there's two more. Travel action, where she can um, travel uh, to move two adjacent regions on a game board, or you can move from a flight path to another using one of those two um, moves. So flight paths, say in the starter town here of uh, South Shore for the Alliance, there's a flight path here, and as one move, you can go from there to, say, Airy Peak's flight path. So that would be one move, and then you'd still have one more move left for a certain for one travel action. And then the last thing you can do is train. Train in allows you to uh, immediately purchase one or more power cards from your class deck. Place it any such cards underneath your spellbook token. So the reason you have a spell book, you have a spell book token and a bag token. And you can only equip items from your bag or spellbook at the end of the round for the, that faction. So the reason that we have, so you place the card, say if you bought a power under here, and then at the end of the round, you can take anything from here and equip them onto your character sheet. Or you can take, and vice versa, you can unequip, equipped, like that. But that's only at the end of the round. So you can't buy an item for the first action of your turn, and then... And then um, fight a creature right away or something like that um, with that new item. You have to wait until you can equip it. So, uh, with that being said, we might as well just start. Um, every character gets two actions on the turn. These little resemble, once you do an action, you flip this to show that you only have one left. You can take your turn actions in any order. So the horde goes first, so so Grumbaz could basically do both his actions, and then Sophia could do both of hers, or he can do one, she can do one, he can do one, she can do one, however you want to do it for your characters. So the first thing that's good to do, I would say, you start with five gold each character, is to buy some abilities. So you start in town. Uh, they both start in town, so they could take a, a town action right off the bat, which allows them to buy abilities, um, or a training action, they both do the same thing. And you can buy any number of abilities up to your level. So you can actually buy more higher, you get higher level items, but you can't equip it until it's of your level. So Grumbass is going to go first, and he's going to buy a couple abilities. So the first one he's going to buy is Battle Shout here, which costs two gold. And then he's going to buy Heroic Strike, which costs three gold. So that's all his gold. He's going to spend all five gold right off the bat on um, those two abilities. Sorry, I'm going to open up the gold bag I have off to the side here um, to place this in. So now these, both these abilities go under his spellbook token. He can't equip them yet until the end of his turn. And Sophia is going to then take a town action. And she's going to get Arcane Intellect for three and Frostbolt for two. Her name is Sophia Ice Call. So I guess I'm going with Frost with her. I could have got Fireball, but her name kind of says she likes the cold. So that's five for her as well. So we're gonna place those in the bag. And both these guys have abilities that they can equip at the end of the round. So then they both have one action left. So we probably move toward a quest if they move in any area with the blue, remember, they automatically have to fight that creature. The problem with this over here is they have a quest there, but they also have a blue creature. They'd have to kill him first. Um, is there a flight path that they could take somewhere to get near somebody? Not really. Um, they have four quests. They have one there. They have up two up there, one right here. Where's their fourth? Where's their uh, fourth quest? Oh, it's right here. Well, I guess they're just going to move up. They're going to move together. They'll do the first fight together. Because it's pretty... You want to make sure you don't die, of course. So they're going to move up here to Garen's Haunt. 
They're just going to take a move action to go here. They're only going to use one move action. They, remember, they can go two spots, but they're going to go one each. And that moves them to Garen's Haunt. So the second move isn't going to do anything. Remember, it takes an action to fight a creature. They already spent an action in town. So basically, they're done for this round. But now that's the end of the round. They can equip their abilities. So the way we do that is based on symbols. So this symbol here on an ability, it means that it's an instant ability. And you pay the energy cost of two here. Anytime you want to use that ability, you have to pay it at the time you use it. So instant ability, pay when used. Used. It also, if you look at the character sheet, they have specific icons that resemble things that can equip there. So this can be equipped on this slot, this slot, this slot. This could also equip a trinket of any kind. And that's about it. And each character has, these aren't actually cards, they're actually printed on the sheet. These are the starting equipments. And if you want to, you can overlap the card on top of the starting equipment and now that one takes effect instead. So we're gonna, it doesn't cost anything to equip this ability. So we're gonna just put this heroic strike down right here. You pay the cost when you use it. And then battle shout, we're gonna equip. And that is not a stance power. So he's able to equip it right away. So he's going to put this here. But this ability means you pay the cost when you equipped it. But it's only a one-time cost. So we have to pay one energy to put this on our sheet. But we don't pay the energy anymore to use its ability. It's just a one-time cost. So this is going to go here. And we got to take one energy away from our boy to pay for it. And he only has one. So he's really not even going to be able to use Heroic Strike until he levels up and gets some more energy. Up here is his level, he's level one, he has four health and one energy. And as you level, you'll gain um, energy, health and energy equal to your level. So as a fighter, of course, he has a lot more health and energy. And now Sophia is going to do the same. So she has a lot more energy than health, being that she's a mage, so it makes sense. So Frostbolt, um, is instant. You pay the cost when in use. So she's going to throw that card here. And Arcane Intellect is you pay when you equipped for one energy. So she's going to put this one here. This is you can only put that type of card here anyway. So might as well put it here. And it costs one energy to equip it of her four. So she's going to spend that energy. And she's good to go there. Okay, so after the character management part of the end of turn, then you advance the turn marker. So we go from the start to two, and because we hit a spot with an icon, this is a merchant icon, which means we add a card of the triangle variety to the merchant deck. So we take the top card of the merchant deck of that symbol, which is a sky collar wand, which is actually pretty nice for our mage and really that's it I'm surprised the yeah the druid can't use a wand it's really only the mage can use the wand if you look at different abilities you're like only a bow or gun can go in this spot and only a mace or sword can go here so the druid can only basically use a mace or a staff um, as a weapon but of course the mage can use a wand and a, and a staff or a sword as well. So this is a pretty good item. It costs eight gold, and it's level two. But this goes on the merchant deck. So you can always shop in a town action in the merchant deck. You can also sell items for half their worth, round it up, um, to the merchant deck as well. So, um, all right. So that's it for the horde. So let's go with the alliance now, and they're gonna do a simple little thing. Um, they're going to buy some cards to start, get some powers, and then they're probably going to move toward a quest, I think. So we'll start with Arturus Moonbeam here, and he's going to take his first action, town action. He's going to buy uh, Rejuvenation and Bear Form, so that's going to cost him five gold. Power up a little bit, get some abilities, so all five of his gold gets spent 
And then for uh, Bourbon Fang, we are going to do a similar thing. He's going to get Scorpid Sting for two. And he's going to get Hunter's Mark for three. So that's another five gold away. So all the gold of our, both our characters basically has been spent. But we spent it on abilities. So I think it was a good idea. Now they're going to do their move actions. So they can, remember they can move two adjacent spaces. So I think they're going to head over here to try to take off this green knoll and amber knoll. So the druid is going to go one, two. And the dwarf's going to follow him. One, two, to Amber Mill. And that's the end of their round. Pretty, not any fighting in these rounds, but we're setting our characters up. So then, just like the other ones, we have character management. So we're going to take these abilities. We're going to take the Mark of the Wild, which costs three energy to equip it. But once you equip it, remember, you don't pay that cost anymore. So that's three energy tokens taken away. And then we're going to equip Cat Form. Which actually is just, a, it's basically, a, not cat form, I'm sorry. That's not the right one. And neither is Mark of the Wild the right one? No, I put them under here. I'm sorry. I'm totally messed up. We bought Rejuvenation. <laughs> Screwed up, sorry. We bought Rejuvenation in bear form. So Rejuvenation, so neither of these cost any energy. Yeah, I screwed that up. Neither of these cost any energy to equip. So Rejuvenation is an instant. So this goes on an instant slot. So we'll put it right here. And Bear Form basically is goes on a attack slot. And the only one we have is this Darkwood Staff. So it goes here. It's a beast form that gives us abilities. We don't ever have to cost spend any money for that or any energy to use this. It's basically like our weapon. So we go into a bear form for our attack as a druid. And it gives us a lot of dice. It's good. And then our hunter has hunter's mark. That will cost him one energy to equip. So that will go uh, here. Matches a symbol. And scorpion sting costs one every time we want to use it. So that will go here for now. So we got to spend the one energy to uh, equip the Hunter's Mark. All right, so our dwarves are ready. Both our character sides are ready. So now that round is done. We move up to round three here. Where nothing, there's no symbol, so nothing special happens in round three. And that is the end of the first two faction turns. I'm going to try, I think, to do each video with... Uh, a faction turn each if they go really fast then I'll maybe sneak two different ones in this one was pretty fast uh, turn wise basically bought some items and equipped them and moved but uh, a bit of explanation in the beginning um, added some time so that's gonna be it for this first video and then we'll continue on and we will definitely have fight into the next video because we are in quest areas so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys later